Happy Saturday, music makers. Welcome back to In Tune. My name's Leon Harrell. On today's show, we are going to look at Piano Marvel Level 1. Um, so if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Say hello in the comments. Let me know your name, the instrument you play, and where you're located. We have folks join us from all around the world, so it's nice to see where you're at. Um, we're going to get right into it. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to take a look at a software called Piano Marble. Um, so if it's your first time joining us every week on this show, we look at a software called Piano Marble and we learn different concepts about how to read music or music theory or tips on playing the piano. Um, so if you'd like to follow along with us each week as we do this, I recommend you download a free copy a free 30-day trial of Piano Marvel, and you can do that at oneminutemusiclesson.com slash toolbox. There you'll see a link to download that. And it is a subscription service. If you decide to continue your subscription um, by using our affiliate code, one minute, you will get 20% off your monthly subscription to that software. Um, but let's jump right into it. Today we're going to look at the... Uh, method cabinet and the technique cabinet. So when you log into the software, you'll land here on your dashboard. Um, so across the, uh, the top or in the sort of four large areas in the middle, um, you'll see an option for the method and the technique cabinet. So these two things come from um, Piano Marvel's method books, which you'll also see on the screen just below my face here. Um, so we're gonna open the method cabinet and within the method cabinet, you will see uh, a trophy cabinet. Um, so here, the, the goal of the software is to teach you how to read music, how to play piano. Um, it's useful for other instruments, but it is designed for piano. And each uh, trophy or each component of this trophy cabinet um, is broken down into individual small lessons. So what we're gonna do this morning is start from the very beginning um, this is level one. We're going to start with uh, 1A, the very beginning. And before we jump into learning about this, I want to point out some features that are not always obvious to everyone when they try the software out. Um, so within the, the first cabinet, or each level of the cabinet really, you will notice that there is a link to a PDF, um, a printable copy of everything that's in this trophy uh, level. Um, so over here on my screen, you can see here I've opened that PDF up and I find this PDF uh, very useful because you can see um, really at a glance what it is you're going to learn uh, within this particular level. So level 1A is going to cover whole notes, whole rests, uh, half notes, quarter notes, and rests. Uh, we'll talk about middle C on the piano. Then it's going to get us into a little bit of how do we start to build coordination skills. So these skills will start out with, well, how do we coordinate just switching left and right hand together? Uh, it's going to continue on, and we're going to learn a little bit about listening and repeating. So that's a, a component of the ear training module. Uh, we'll dive into eighth notes. Uh, and then it wraps up with a review of all the concepts you learned in level 1A. So my goal this morning is to try to get through this within the hour. If We won't rush it, but we'll see how far along we can get. Um, but beyond that, so that's the method cabinet. The second thing I want to point your attention to that's not always obvious, Piano Marble has some lessons built into each level. Um, so you could click that and watch a very short overview that's built right into the software. Um, beyond that, I also want to point out to you that there are there's two trophy cabinets. There's the method trophy cabinet, which is what we're looking at, but there's also the technique cabinet. You can access that at the top or from the dashboard. Within the technique cabinet, again, you'll have an entire new set of trophies. You'll also have a link to the PDF that goes with that uh, particular module. So you could print this out and see the additional instructions that go with that method. Um, I don't think we'll have time to go through all the technique this morning, but if we do, we'll jump over here and take a look at that too. Um, so we're going to switch back to method. And Piano Marble is designed to teach you how to read music and how to, how to play the piano really from the very beginning. So a lot of you out there, 
you're not really total beginners. Maybe you had lessons when you were younger and you're just uh, reapproaching the piano or reading music as an adult or later in life. Um, but what I would encourage you to do this morning as you're following along, even these skills that seem rather simple to you, try the additional uh, counting exercises. I find that most students I teach, I primarily work with um, adult learners that are either coming back to the piano or maybe it's their first time um, approaching reading music. And this, the thing people struggle with the most is how to count rhythm and how to get themselves into a habit of actively counting while they're playing. Because it, it takes a lot to juggle reading the music, counting the music, coordinating and playing with your hands on the keyboard all at the same time. And usually the first thing to go is the counting. People want to lean on their ear or their memory to just sort of imitate uh, the songs they already know. Uh, and they tend to not actively be counting. So that is the thing I'd like you to focus on if this, if this level of the software seems kind of simple to you. Stay focused on the counting. We're going to go ahead and open up level one, uh, a first exercise. So I've already gone through and done these exercises, so you can see that it's already indicated that I've earned a gold trophy. But the way this works is when you open it for the first time, you won't have any trophies that you've collected so far. So when we click on the first level, we'll open it up. Okay. Like I said, a lot of these uh, lessons and levels are all going to come with video lessons to get you started. So at the top, you can see there's a link uh, to a very simple lesson on this. Um, but that's what I'm going to do this morning is walk you through sort of what do I do with my students? And what extra things do I teach um, within my virtuoso uh, group piano lessons? So <clears throat> at the beginning, you can see um, we've got the music here for this exercise. I'm going to go ahead and also simultaneously show you the page from the method books um, that many people will uh, inadvertently skip over. So when you're looking in the method book, the very first thing it's going to teach you is just an overview of the grand staff, which is this, this connection between the treble clef and the bass clef and this little brace that connects the two. So when we, when we talk about both staffs at the same time or both staves at the same time, that's called the grand staff. So within the method book, you can see an explanation of that. You can see... Uh, just a couple things highlighted. This is the treble clef. It's also known as the G clef because it rests on the G line, um, which is that second line from the bottom, G. And then we also see the bass clef, which is also called the F clef, which because it rests on the F line, the second line from the top. Okay. You will notice that they have pointed out um, a handful of notes here. We've got middle C right in the middle. We've got low C, an octave below that, and high C, an octave above that. And then they've just filled in the, um, the middle C position notes. So what I mean by that is if we pay, place both of our thumbs on middle C, and I'll do that here on my keyboard, if we fan out five notes, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, all right? then we would have all the notes we see on this graph. So we have F, G, A, B, middle C, middle C, D, E, F, G. And then the other two notes they're showing us is low C and high C. These are all the notes that we're going to use within level one of Piano Marvel. Um, and as we have more notes, they'll, they'll introduce those within the, the uh, modules. Um, so the last thing before we move on from this spot is to notice that some of these notes are on lines. So they sit on top of a line like the letter, uh, the pitch E and the pitch G. Uh, and in the, the bass clef, you can see the A is on a line, the F is on a line. Okay, And some of these notes are on spaces. So if I look at them uh, from the bottom of this chart up, we've got low C is on a space, G is on a space, B is technically in a space, but it's the space just above the treble clef. D is in a space, F, and the high C. All right. The only note we haven't talked about here is middle C. All right. So middle C is a special note. It's an orientation note. It's it's how we um, 
know where we are on the piano, we often locate that note first, uh, and then we sort of orient ourselves to the keyboard and to the music. Um, so if it's your first time playing piano, that middle C is really easy to find. Find the general middle of your keyboard, so right about here. Look for the group of two black notes, and then look off to the left by just one key, and that's middle C. Um, so middle C is special on the grand staff because middle C is what connects the treble clef to the bass clef, so it's directly in the middle. Um, you'll see that note represented two different ways often. If we're reading music in the treble clef and we need to play middle C, it's usually shown in the treble clef on the first ledger line, so the first little bitty line below the staff. If it's shown on the bass clef, it's shown on uh, the first ledger line above the bass clef. And we'll see that in action as we go through these examples. So as you scroll through uh, the method book, it shows these notes mapped out to the keyboard. Um, so you, it's easy to sort of figure that out. All right, it goes into next talking about your posture and finger numbers. So the posture chart uh, is fairly self-explanatory, but the key here when you're sitting at the piano, you want to be sitting nice and tall. You want to be sitting towards the front of your chair so you're not leaning on the back of your chair. You want your arm to be relatively parallel to, to the keys themselves. We don't want our arm to be up or like so because it'll put too much tension in our wrist. Or if it's up, it'll put tension in our shoulder. All right, and when we're seated at the piano, you sort of want your hand mm, cupped like this when your hand is on the keys. All right, because we don't want a flat position, we want it up. It gives us more control of the movements of our fingers. When our hand is flat, it's a lot harder to control your fingers. Okay, the last thing they're covering here is the finger numbers. So when we look at sheet music, oftentimes for piano especially, you will see little numbers one through five above some of the notes. What this is telling you is which finger Thumbs are always finger number one, two, three, four, five. It sort of fans out from the thumbs in each hand. It's telling you which finger to play on which note. Um, and generally that's a suggestion, it's not a rule. Um, but a lot of times the fingering numbers are used in sheet music to help you know when do I need to shift my hand up and down the keyboard. All right, we'll dive into that as we see it in musical examples. Okay. So looking in our method book, here's example 1A, all right? And they've got some additional information that you don't necessarily see in the software. We see our tempo marking right here, so quarter note equals 100. We see an explanation of the whole note, means to play and hold the note for four counts. The whole rest means to uh, do not play, but hold that silence for the count for four counts. Uh, and then we just see uh, the music here. Also in the method book, you'll notice they have the accompaniment that you'll hear as you play along in Piano Marvel. The accompaniment track uh, is written out just in case you're having a lesson with your teacher. Your teacher could play that for you instead of the software. Okay, so let's play through this first example. To do that, all you're going to need is one finger. We'll use our pointer finger. We'll place it on middle C, all right, and we're going to count out loud as we do the exercise. We're only playing one note, so the, the key thing to think about is actively counting while you're looking at the music and playing the note on the keyboard. So we're going to do that in two different, um, two different modes of the software. The first mode is called prepare mode, which means that the software won't move forward until you play the correct note. So prepare mode is perfect for learning the correct notes of a piece. The assess mode, the second mode, um, this is going to allow the software to move along regardless of what you're doing, um, which is great for playing along to make sure your rhythm is correct, um, because if it's correct, you'll sync up and be aligned with the music. If it's incorrect, the music will move forward and you'll be out of sync uh, with the music. So before we jump into doing that, we're just going to make sure that we're going to click the button that says control in the bottom right corner and we're just going to set our volume for the accompaniment uh, to be about so, so you can hear it. 
Um, I use a Yamaha P45 digital piano, so I don't need the virtual piano to have any volume in the software. Um, but I am going to turn up the sound of the metronome so we can hear the click along with that. Okay, so let's give it a go. We're going to do it in prepare mode, so there's no metronome in prepare mode. Okay, and I'm just going to count two measures myself. So pointer finger on middle C. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, go. One, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four. 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 One, two, three, four. Four and off. As soon as you hit the last note, the software is going to calculate um, a score of how well did you read the notes. Okay, so on my first attempt here, um, I got all the notes correct. If they're incorrect, it'll mark them in red and you'll see a number of how many red notes did you get. Um, it's going to tell me in length of time in seconds how fast did I play through this. The target time to play this piece is just over 21 seconds, so it took me a little bit longer. Um, so it's calculating a score based on how, um, how correctly did you play the notes. I got all the notes correct, but how correctly did I also um, get within that target time. Um, so my target time was a little bit longer, so that's dropped my score just a little bit. Okay, so I could do this again in prepare mode if I wanted to uh, practice it a little bit more before I play along with the accompaniment and it's um, capturing my score. In the assess mode is how we'll earn our um, progress towards the trophies for this trophy cabinet. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and reset it, yes. And I'll close it here, all right. And you can see at the top, I've done this exercise before, so it's showing me um, the last time I did this, I got 100% and my highest score is 100%, so I've earned the gold trophy. But let's do it one time. Uh, in assessment mode and just listen. We're going to clap along and just listen. We're not going to play at all. So here we go. It's going to count off four beats for us and then we'll clap and count along with it. One, one, two, two, set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four, 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 off. All right, and it'll stop. So it's calculated a score of zero because I didn't play anything at all. But oftentimes with my students, I like them to play through a couple times in assess mode just to listen to the accompaniment and actively count along the rhythm while they clap it. So now we're going to do it again in assess mode, um, but this time I'm going to play along with it, so I won't be clapping, but I will be counting out loud. So here we go. One, one, two, two, set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four. 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 Four, one, two, three, four, off. Okay? So as I did that, you may have noticed on the camera, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm, I'm sort of exaggerating when I play a rest, or when there is a rest, I'm lifting my hand off the key. Um, but you want to be in the practice of not doing that. You really want to, when you play the piano or as you're reading music, always be thinking about the conservation of motion. How can I move as little as possible um, and that might mean, how can I move my hand as little as possible, my finger as little as possible, my eyes as little as possible from the music itself. Um, so we want to always be conserving our motion um, because that's what helps us be more efficient in the whole process. Um, so you can see here, I've played through it and I've earned 100. That's given me a little gold trophy for this particular lesson. And now I'm ready to move on to the next lesson. Um, so let's close out of this one, and we're going to scroll down uh, in our method book here 
to the next example, which is half notes and half rests. So our, our book shows us here half notes are two counts, uh, half rests are two counts, uh, and it's going to give us a chance to try that. So now that you've seen it in action, let's just do this one. Let's jump right into assess mode with this. So we're going to click number two. We'll do it in assess, and I want you to count out loud as you play. So this is all middle C again. One, one, two, two, set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, off. All right, so it's going to calculate our score again and give us that trophy. The way the trophy system works is if you get, um, and I could be a little bit off on this, I think it is if you get an 80, you get a bronze trophy, a 90 is a silver trophy, and a 100 is a gold trophy. Um, so you'll get three different types of trophies depending on the um, how well you play through the piece or how, how accurately you play through. Okay, we'll finish up um, this sort of portion of it by looking at the quarter notes lesson. So this is lesson number three. Uh, and you'll see the same thing in your method book as you follow along. <clears throat> so here our method is showing us that the quarter note equals one time. And it's pointing out to us that in the beginning of uh, a piece of sheet music, you should see a time signature uh, something that tells us how many beats are in a measure and what is equivalent to a beat. Um, so that's what we're counting against. We're counting the number of beats. All right, so in this case, the time signature is 4-4, four, four, which means four counts per measure and the quarter note gets the count or the quarter note is equivalent to a beat. All right, um, so you'll see the counting written in in this example. So again, we're going to play the notes. Uh, they're all middle C and we're gonna count out loud while we do it because that is the skill that people really struggle with doing. So you wanna, you wanna start this skill uh, with a piece of music that is very simple for you to do. Most anyone could sit down and count and play this music, it's only one note. Um, because you wanna train yourself to be able to count it uh, without having to think too, too much about it. You want that to sort of be on autopilot. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna do this one in assess mode. One, one, two, two. Set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, so again, it'll calculate our score. It'll give us that trophy if we've earned between 80 and 100 points there. Okay, and we can move on to the next lesson. So now we've gone through a little bit of learning about what's a whole note, what's a half note, what's a quarter note. Um, well, the thing that's important to know about that in music, when, if you think of it from more of a music theory perspective, uh, when we're counting rhythms, all of our notation is built on a system that's um, cutting the proportion down uh, by two or cutting it in half. So the whole note is four beats, the half note is two beats, the quarter note is one beat, and when we get to it in a moment, we'll see the eighth note is a half of a beat. So each rhythmic value is cutting it in half. Okay, let's play through numbers four uh, and five, uh, and then when we get to six, we'll talk a little bit about hand coordination. All right, so number four <clears throat> is giving us a mixture of quarter notes, half notes, and whole notes. Again, count the beat out loud. So count one, two, three, four out loud. Okay, and remember that quarter notes get one beat, half notes get two beats, and whole notes get four. Okay, if you find that the tempo uh, or the speed of the music is a little too fast for, uh, for you at this moment, or you're not quite ready uh, to be counting and, and playing and coordinating everything together at that speed, you could do this in a, a practice mode um, that's a little bit slower, okay? So maybe you want to practice um, all of this piece, but instead of 100 beats per minute, which is the tempo we've been doing, let's do it 80 beats a minute. It's a little bit slower, okay? So let's try that in assessment mode. One, two, two set, set go. go. 
One, two, three, four. 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 All right, so it'll calculate our score. Okay, and my computer's running a little, it's a lot of stuff cooking, so sometimes the, the rhythm can get off while I'm live streaming. All right, but it's calculated our score. We're going to do it again this time at full speed. All right, so we'll go back to 100. All right, I'm going to give it another go just to see if the computer can hang with that. One, two, set, go. go. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, so it'll calculate our score again. Uh, and this time it's calculated 100% there. All right, our next lesson, uh, number five, this one's called Not the C Song. Um, and that's because these are not middle C. So if we look back at our note chart here, can you tell what note that is? That note is on the treble clef. It's on the bottom line or the first line. Uh, and that line, that, that note happens to be an E. All right, so all of these notes are E. Um, and a lot of times when I play through a piece of music, I like to scan through the whole thing just visually one time before I play it, just so I have an idea of what's going to happen in this music. Okay, let's do this one also in assessment mode. We're still pretty simple here. All right, here we one, go. Two, set, go. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, off. All right, so it will calculate our score. All right, so it's progressively making, um, the the lessons a little bit more challenging sometimes they're a little bit faster sometimes they're adding new notes uh to the lesson um so each lesson you're learning one more concept so now we've added in the note e all right let's move on to lessons six uh seven eight nine uh and 10. So 6 through 10 are all about learning the coordination between your right hand and your left hand. Okay, so they're going to keep it simple. It's always going to be middle C and low C. So we're just alternating between the two. And we're never going to be playing them at the same time. We're just, we're, fun, we're looking at just um, alternating right now. So let's look at number six. Um, and if you're following along in your method book, um, so let's say you've printed it out. I recommend all my students print them out. Um, let's see, this is going to be uh, page 11 on that. Okay, You'll notice that it's pointing out that our right hand, uh, our right hand is going to play middle C here, and our left hand is going to play uh, the lower C. All right, so it's marked that on the keyboard in the graphic here. You'll see middle C right in the middle. And our low C, it's highlighting this is the, the note we're trying to focus on reading. Okay, so here we go. Let's do this one in prepare mode. All right, so when I do things in prepare mode, I like to count two measures before I play. I find that counting just one measure, the software automatically just counts one. I'm not a big fan of that, but that's just the way the software works. Um, I like to count two measures because it gives you time to mentally prepare uh, for the, the tempo and the meter that you're playing in. Um, so when you do things in prepare mode, I always recommend count two whole measures. All right, so place your hands in position on the keyboard. We'll have middle C and low C. Um, there is no right or wrong finger to use here. It's not telling us any particular finger number. Um, so whatever's comfortable for you. I'm going to play... Um, my pointer finger on middle C and my pointer finger on low C. Okay, one, two, three, four, and one, two, 
three, go. One, two, three, four, rest. Two, three, four. 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 One, two, three, four, and off. And as soon as you hit the last note, it's going to calculate the score in prepare mode. Okay? So let's try that one again. Let's do it in assess mode this time. Uh, and it's going to be a hair bit faster than I did it. I think I counted that probably between 80 and 90 beats a minute. So here we go. Hands on the keyboard. Here we go. One, two, two, set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four, 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 and one, two, three, four, and off. All right, and it'll calculate our score. And depending on what we've scored, we'll earn a trophy for that. All right, so moving right along, lesson number seven, half notes, so focusing on those with the alternation between left and right hand. So we're going to do this right in assessment mode. Here we go. One, two, two set, set, go. go. One, two, rest, two. One, two, rest, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, 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 four, and off. All right. So you may have noticed I counted that um, one, two, rest, two, one, two, rest, two, and then I switched into counting one, two, three, four. So when you're counting, you can count uh, a lot of different ways. Um, but when you're in the very beginning, sometimes it's easier to count the length of the note or the length of the rest um, rather than counting along with the number of beats. So in this meter, it's 4-4. Four, four. There's four beats in a measure, um, and each beat is a quarter note. Um, but you might find as you begin the process of learning how rhythm works and how to count rhythm to count each note independently. Um, you know, that's different for everybody, and it's different for uh, each piece of music you look at it, you might choose one way or the other. But when in doubt, I count along with the meter itself, um, because that's going to fit many more applications than counting just by the no individual notes. Okay, so that's our half note lesson. Let's go on to the quarter notes uh, with alternating left and right. Alright, so these are done in groups of four. Let's do it right in assessment mode. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, so it'll calculate our score. Let's move on to lesson number nine. All right, it's a second example with quarter notes. Um, and let's take a look at it in our method book as well. So now we are increasing the speed of how fast we're alternating between left hand and right hand. So like I said, each lesson you do in the piano marble system uh, within their method and technique cabinets is going to get a little bit more challenging each time. Okay, so let's do this one in prepare mode. Um, and I want you to, to be aware, pay attention as you're reading the music. It's really easy to look at sheet music when you're a beginner and you sort of zone out or sort of space out a little bit and you're not really looking and paying attention anymore. You're more focused on, are my hands in the right place or am I playing the right note? Um, and, and you're no longer really paying attention to the sheet music itself. That's kind of the hardest thing to overcome as you get better and better at sight reading or, or reading sheet music for the first time uh, for a new piece. So this piece, rather than having your eye go from um, bass clef to treble clef uh, and sort of alternating back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, think of reading it in a slice, all right? 
Um, and I like to read it from, from bottom up, not top down. Um, I want you to read, or, or rather look with your eye, scan with your eye, from the bottom up. All right, so, so sort of visually take in this entire first beat of music in both um, staves at the same time. The temptation is going to be to bounce back and forth here, there, here, there, here, there, here, here. But start to train yourself to read it more so one slice up on beat one from bottom to top, the second slice, beat two from bottom to top, the third slice, beat three from bottom to top, etc. So you're sort of scanning like this. All right. Okay. Let's do this one in prepare mode. All right. So hands on the keyboard, low C and middle C only, it looks like. Uh, and we'll give it two measures. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, go. One, two, three, four, 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 and off. Okay, we're going to do it again in assessment mode. Now we could go straight into assessment mode from the report right here. So we'll click assessment. One, one, two, two, set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Okay, so our, our difficulty level is starting to build here. So if you're totally brand new, you may be starting to feel like, okay, this is getting challenging. I might need to slow this down or, you know, this is kind of challenging. I'd, I would go back and do the other lessons a couple times before I keep moving forward. Um, some things to think about um, as you're reading music, um, whether you're new or maybe you've been doing it a while, but you're starting to develop some, um, some, some habits to the way you do it. Um, one habit that beginners will do is it's very natural for us to feel the pulse of the music, to feel uh, the meter as it uh, counts along. And by feeling it, I mean we're, we're demonstrating that with our body. So the way we do that um, is either tapping our foot uh, along with the beat um, or what's, what happens a lot of times when you're sitting at the keyboard and you're so focused on what you're doing you're bobbing your head to the beat, all right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's a very natural instinct, but you have to learn to start to fight against that. Um, like I said, you want to always be focused on the conservation of motion, only moving what is necessary to move to produce the sound. Um, so the reason we don't want to bob our head is it makes our playing very mechanical. Now, these are very simple um, teaching pieces. They're not really meant to be performed in a concert setting. Um, but when we're learning uh, these simple pieces, this is the perfect time to practice stillness uh, within the body. So you only want to really be moving your, hand, your fingers. That's what you want to focus on. Um, we don't want to try to move our hands, our, our wrists uh, very much, just the fingers. And we don't want to bob our head along with the beat. Um, it's fine if you need to do that to stay focused, but work towards staying steady without bobbing along to the beat. Moving on to lesson number 10. All right, so now we are returning to the C song, but now they have uh, the alternation between left and right hands, okay? So again, you can see that here in the method book on the side. Let's go ahead and do it right in assessment mode. One, one two, two, set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. All right, and we'll stop there. Um, so I see a comment rolling in here. It says, uh, David, 
Leon, I have to bail here. An appointment is early. Thanks as I, oh, no problem. Thanks for uh, joining us. Um, so when you're counting along here, um, some things to know about the software. Um, so if you're a total beginner, you've probably already noticed there's a cursor that's moving along, helping us keep the tempo, um, and it's showing um, the timing. Super useful for a beginner. Um, but if you're a little bit more seasoned and you're really trying to focus on reading the music and you find that that cursor is a little distracting, we can change that in the settings. So if we look at the, the top menu here on the right hand side, we'll drop that menu down and go to our preferences. And I'm going to change the visibility of that cursor to be hidden. Okay, and I'm going to do this example again um, so you can see how it looks without the cursor and how you have to be, it, it makes you more dependent on following the music and keeping your place. So we'll do it one more time in assessment mode. One, two, two set, set, go. go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if you're ready to up the challenge, I recommend you turn the cursor off. Um, that will make you have to be the one uh, fully responsible of tracking where are you at in the music. Okay, I'm going to turn that back on just so as we continue on, it's a little bit um, easier for people to follow. Okay, so we're going to wrap up this uh, section here. Uh, yeah, that was uh, song number 10. So song number 11, um, we're starting to introduce two hands simultaneously, two hands together. Um, so looking along in the method book also, you will notice you've got your left hand playing whole notes. So you're, you're pressing and holding for four beats but your right hand is moving independently with quarter notes and quarter wrists. So we're gonna do this in prepare mode, okay? So again, when you're playing in prepare mode, I like people to count two complete measures before you start. It allows your mind to stay calm and be ready to produce all the things we're asking it to do uh, to stay coordinated. So here we go, hands on the keyboard. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, go. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, and it's given us our score. So we're gonna do this one in assessment mode to do it one more time, but you'll notice the, the top half of the music, the first uh, system of music, those first four measures, our left hand is the one holding the notes, uh, holding the whole notes. Uh, and then on the bottom system, the bottom four measures, our right hand is the one holding the four, uh, the whole note. So here we go, hands on the keyboard. One, one. Two, two, set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, hands off. Okay, so moving on to the next lesson, we've got. Uh, the introduction of um, sort of listening and copying. So number 12 is a piece called Copycat. Okay, and you'll see in the method book, there's more instructions in the method book than directly in the software itself. Um, but in this case, you might be listening to your teacher play the accompaniment along, or the software will play it for you if you don't have a teacher present. Okay, and we're listening for the rhythm in the melody, uh, which sounds like bump, 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 bump. And each measure, you'll listen to the melody, and, this, and the next measure, you'll play the melody. You'll repeat what you heard, all right? Um, so when you're doing this, you might try um, listening and then clapping. You might try listening and clapping and counting at the same time, which is what I would recommend. 
Uh, and then lastly, you want to play and count. So you want to do it in that order as you're able to do it um, that way. So let's do it in assessment mode so the software will move forward for us automatically. And we're going to listen and then clap the, the rhythm that we see. One, two, two, set, set, go, go. So that is going to be it. And again, as you're clapping, the software is not calculating anything you're doing. The, you're not playing the keyboard, so you're going to earn zero points for that. Let's do it again. Let's clap and count this time. So we'll do it in assessment mode. One, two, two, set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, and again, it's not calculating anything. So now we're gonna play it. So we're gonna do it in assess mode. All of these are middle C, hands on the keyboard. One, one, two, two, set, set, go, go. And then lastly, you may want to do it one more time and, and play and count at the same time. For sake of time, I'm going to move forward. Let's take a look at number 13. All right, so this is the same concept, um, but now we're adding in eighth notes. All right, so when we're, when we're counting the eighth notes, um, the eighth note um, divides the quarter note into two equal pieces. All right, so rather than each beat counting one, two, three, Four, if each beat is divided into two pieces, we'll count one and two and three and four and. All right, so we'll see that in uh, several of these measures. When we see a, a group, a pair of two eighth notes, we're counting one and two and etc. cetera for, for each pair of them, okay? So just listen and repeat. So we'll do it in assessment mode. We'll clap along. One, one, two, two, set, set, go, go. So we'll do it this time. We'll play through and count through in assessment mode. One, one, two, two, set, set, go, go. And two and three, four. One, two, three and four. One and two and three, four. One, two, three, and four. All right, and it'll calculate our score. Okay, so rounding out our lesson here, we're going to do number 14 and 15 and wrap up with the flashcards. So number 14 is an example with eighth notes. All right, and we'll see that in our method book as well. All right, and it's just focused on showing you how to count it um, with the countings written in. Okay, uh, so we'll do this one. Let's just do it right in, let's do it in prepare mode first. So here we go. They're all middle C. So count two measures. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, go. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, two and three, four. Okay, now we'll do it in assessment mode. One, two, two, set, set, go, go. 
One, two, and three, four. And one, two, and three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. And one, two, and three, four. All right, moving on to lesson 15. All right, now we have a mixture of whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, and eighth notes. Let's go right into assessment mode. One, one, two, two, set, set, go, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four, off. Excellent. So our last component from this first trophy cabinet, uh, method 1A here, uh, lessons 16 through 20, these are flashcard assignments. So when you click on them, they work a little bit differently than the other things. You'll just see one measure of music at the beginning, and then you'll see four empty measures just so that the, uh, the music is spaced out. Okay, so you don't see the second um, example. So what we're going to do, it's only available in prepare mode. What I'd like you to do is hit prepare, all right, and keep your own tempo. Okay, so we're just looking at one measure, think of the tempo, and then play it in tempo. So one two, three, four, and one, two, three, go. One, two, three, four. And then the, the flash card will switch to the next flash card. Prepare yourself with uh, a measure or maybe two measures and then play the card. So this is low C. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then it will repeat. So there's five or six cards in each lesson, and then you'll do the same thing. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four. And then it'll switch. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it'll take a moment to get acclimated to that activity, um, but you want all it's testing you here for when you're in prepare mode is that you are doing it within the target time. Um, so to do that, when you hit prepare mode, you can jump right into playing it in rhythm. So I'm going to do that now. Here we go. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So as long as I did it under 34 seconds, I'll earn a hundred percent if I've played all the notes correctly. We'll wrap up with 17, 18, 19, and 20. Same concept. So here we go. I'll hit prepare and I'll just count to four. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, moving on to 18. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, and it's, it's harder as you do it because your reflexes have to be a little bit faster because you don't see the music until it's time for that card to flip over. All right, last two, we've got 19. 
Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, and then the last one is 20. All right, here we go. Number 20 and one, two, three, four. 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 All right, etc. I added an empty measure in there, but that's okay. So now we're going to, that wraps up all of level uh, 1A and the method cabinet. Now, if you were ready to continue on, I recommend you alternate between the method cabinet and the technique cabinet. So we've completed 1A and the method. So now let's switch to the technique. And then I would recommend you go uh, all through level 1A here. The technique cabinet is going to focus on various skills, but in this particular one, it's giving you more rhythms to count, um, to listen and repeat. Uh, and it's also giving you some assignments, um, some exercises in ear training. So you're listening, uh, for example, number five here, it'll play some music and then you play back what it played to you. Um, so they're keeping it simple in the beginning. They're showing you what it played in those next two measures. But as the exercises get harder, sometimes they leave the information out and you really do have to use your ear to figure out what are the correct notes to play there. Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up for us this morning. Um, so we've been going through this morning in Piano Marble uh, Level 1A. I love this software. I use it every week on the show to teach different concepts. Um, and I also use it in teaching in my group piano lessons on Zoom uh, and my Virtuoso group piano lessons. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about that or, or anything we've covered today, um, visit my website, OneMinuteMusicLesson.com. You'll see lots of lessons on how to read music. Um, you'll see a link to my book. I have a book, How to Read Music Easily in 30 Days. I'll throw a link to that up on the screen now, um, which covers a lot of the concepts we've done this morning, uh, going into much more advanced things about reading music. Okay. If you do have a question, feel free to throw it in the comments below. We try to answer that throughout the week before next, uh, uh, our next episode. Um, or you can always send that directly to our mailbag at OneMinuteMusicLesson.com slash mailbag. Um, that's going to be it. I always like to end the show by saying thank you to our patrons. Um, if you enjoyed this show um, and you'd like to become a patron, visit OneMinuteMusicLesson.com slash support. You can learn more about that. Um, and really, our patrons are what help us achieve our mission of spreading musical lit literacy around the world. So thank you so much, patrons, for that. That's going to be it. My name's Leon Harold. Thanks for tuning in today to In Tune. We uh, have our show every Saturday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, which is Chicago time. Uh, and that's going to be it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.